What is going on YouTube? Sin City Guns here out in Las Vegas. It has been a long while since I've made a video. I apologize. Um, been extremely, extremely busy with work and travel. But I got something new for you guys, and uh, I don't think there's any other reviews of this particular firearm out there on the internet or on YouTube yet. So this might be a first. Um, what we got here is an STI 2011 Hex TAC 9mm. Um, this gun was debuted at uh, 2015 SHOT Show at the beginning of this year out here in Las Vegas. And um, the good buddy of mine is a, um, he owns a gun store here in Las Vegas and he's an STI, STI dealer. Um, Freedom Firearms is, is the name of the company there. Uh, if you guys haven't checked them out and you're in the Las Vegas area, I highly, highly recommend it. Shannon is the owner over there. He's a really good guy. Freedom Firearms, they're on um, the southwest side of town off of the 215 freeway, and they're at Warm Springs and Durango Boulevard. But anyways, they're an STI dealer, and um, Shannon and his partner were at the uh, shop show, and they saw this, and um, they convinced STI to let them get one, and uh, they could only get their hands on one of them. So Shannon called me up. Um, you know, he knows I'm, I'm a big uh, a big gun guy and he knows I shoot competitive and um, he also knows that I was in the market for a 2011. Um, currently actually having one built by uh, S SV Infinity and uh, that's gonna probably be another year or uh, 18 months. So anyways, he called me up and he told me about this gun. I hadn't seen it, he didn't have any pictures of it, but he told me about it. It's very, very similar to the STI Marauder, which was designed for three gun um, that's why, you know, they have the, uh, the rail on there and everything. Anyway, so he told me about the gun and, uh, I told him I'd take it. I gave him a deposit. That was back in, I think, uh, January of this year. And it just came in the other day. Um, so it took, uh, you know, it took about, I don't know, nine months or so, something like that. But anyways, here it is. So for those of you guys that aren't familiar the 2011 is, is the new modern take on the 1911. And basically, this gun actually is three pieces. So you have um, you know the top slide portion here, and then you have the bottom portion, which is still steel or aluminum, depending on the, the make and the gun and things like that. And then that is mated to a poly frame. And uh, they do that to go ahead and get the, uh, the double stack characteristics of it. Um, so it allows you to have a double stack 9mm or 40 or 45 and these are shot in competition a lot. Um, I shoot USPSA and a lot of the guys are shooting either STIs that are all tricked out uh, depending on if they're shoot, shooting open or limited. Um, I guess you could even shoot this in production if you wanted to as well and then a lot of the guys are shooting the, uh, the SV Infinities as well. Um, so this gun is pretty sweet man. I, I like it. It's uh, it's a very, very unique design. You can actually see um, the top of the slide is cut three ways there. And then they stay with this kind of like hex theme in the front cocking serrations, going back to the rear cocking serrations, and then even on the hammer here. You can get different colors uh, as far as the, the handles go, the grips go. Um, you can order those right from STI. You can have a, um, a dealer order them for you. This is the way this gun came, so this is probably how I'll leave it. So I got this uh, about a month ago, and um, it actually came in when I was out of town. So by the time I picked it up, um, pretty busy with work as well and finally got to shoot it last Friday. So I took it out, I put about 500 rounds through it. Um, this thing performed absolutely flawlessly, man. It was just super, super smooth. I've only shot a um, 9mm 1911 once before. That was a, sing that was a uh, single stack 9mm 1911 um, from Wilson Combat. And that thing was super, super smooth as well. And I gotta tell you, from what I remember, I think this, shoots a lot better. Um, this thing was just so, so smooth. 
Um, it just eats up the recoil, no problem. I mean, it's just super, super smooth. Um, very, very accurate right out of the box. Uh, it does have the adjustable rear sight. I don't even uh, feel a need to mess with it. I don't need to drift that sight at all. Um, great, great performing gun. I'll tell you what I liked about it. The uh, the front cocking serrations are actually a little bit more rear rearward on this gun than they are normally on a lot of other um, guns and, and you know 1911s and 2011s and it makes it that much more functional. Uh, I do come over the top sometimes to rack it and to clear malfunctions and things like that and these cocking serrations are perfect for where I grip the gun and I'll kind of show you in contrast with my Wilson um, 45 1911. Normally if I was going to come over the top on this I would come here as well and these front cocking serrations are not far enough back. They're a little too far forward and I'll tell you I don't like that because that just gets my fingers a little bit too close to the barrel um, for my comfort. So uh, that's one thing I did like about that. They're, um, they're a little bit farther back and they're just they're actually more functional. So I'll compare for you guys too, so you can kind of, can kind of see the size difference here. Um, Length-wise, they're exactly the same. Um, the Wilson is going to look a little bit shorter just because um, I have the uh, I have the sunken crown cut barrel there, but pretty similar there. <clears throat> And then they're very, very similar as far as the grip goes. Um, the only difference is going to be the magwell on this as far as the length. Um, magwell is going to add a little bit. Uh, but I'll tell you what, that magwell is extremely, extremely functional when you're doing quick mag changes. Um, it just feeds it right in there, which is awesome. So that's nice there. Uh, the big difference is obviously going to be in the width of the grip. Let me see if I can get a good shot of this for you guys here. So it is considerably thicker. Um, I definitely feel it. I mean, yeah, I mean, I definitely feel it. You can see um, if I get a nice high grip there, um, I do have a little bit of an undercut on this. Wilson Combat here, but you can see if I get a full, full grip, how far my fingers come around. I cover up that medallion and I'm kind of covering up two thirds with my middle and uh, ring finger there of the grip. And then on this gun here, you can see I only get about halfway down the grip there. Um, Cause it is thicker. I mean, it's thicker around. Um, it doesn't feel that much thicker sideways here to here but it does feel fuller in the hand. It definitely feels fuller. That's the best way I can explain it. Um, if you, I would think if you have kind of small hands um, and a 1911 is, is kind of perfect for you and you have you know shorter fingers, this might be a little bit too big for you. Uh, I actually like it. I like grips that are a little bit larger. It just, it fills up a, a little bit better for me. Um, so you see you got the square trigger guard there. now. <clears throat> Something to keep in mind if you're if you're considering any 2011s or anything like that um, It kind of works With holsters made for the 1911. So here's one of the blade techs. I run for my Wilson And you get nice retention there uh, This holster does work kind of you're not going to get the retention and it's just because of the difference in profile of the trigger guard there. So I'm not gonna actually get any retention with this. Um, it kind of clicks into place, but it doesn't actually hold the firearm. Um, it's fine, you know, I, I actually used this holster when I went to the range the other day just so I had something um, to put on my belt, but I definitely have to get an actual holster that's made for the 2011. If I was gonna run around or anything, this would not be safe. So it came with uh, it came with one magazine, uh, which is kind of depressing, especially considering that this gun was like twenty seven hundred bucks. So it came with one magazine. Originally, it came with a magazine with a brown base plate, and then it had um, a black. Uh, I don't know if it was Cerakoted or Duracoat magazine, and that magazine actually did not function. 
Uh, I don't know if it was the wrong size or what it was, if it was too thick because of the Duracoat, but I couldn't even get it to engage in the gun unless I really jammed it in there and forced it, and then it wouldn't actually release the magazine either. I believe this is a hundred and what is it? This is a hundred and forty millimeter um, magazine. I believe this holds twenty uh, nine millimeter rounds. You can go up from there. You can get hundred and seventy, and then I do have an example of a smaller one, a 126, if you want something that's gonna sit a little flush. Um, I don't know exactly how many rounds all of these holds. I, I don't really nerd out on the specifics of stuff. I should probably know that, but you guys can easily look it up. But anyways, that first magazine that came with it, <clears throat> as soon as I got it, I was in the gun store, I tried it, it didn't work. I took actually took the magazine home and I sanded the shit out of it and tried to get all the Cerakote off, thinking it was maybe too thick. Uh, but that still didn't work and then I noticed the follower was coming out, it was just a mess. So brought it back to my guy Shannon over at Freedom, Fi Freedom Firearms and um, he sent it back to STI. They sent me this new one which, uh, which works just great. Um, Shannon did say that he was having issues with other black STI magazines. So anybody else out there that's shooting STI, um, they can probably comment on that but that's something maybe to keep in mind. Um, so yeah, so I ran it 500 rounds. I ran through this thing, and like I said, it just it just ran perfect, absolutely perfect. I was blown away with how smooth this thing is. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. The 1911 style gun just eats up eats up the recoil, which is great. Um, something else to be aware of on a uh, on a 1911, um, I got a bit of an extended slide release on this Wilson here, but. Um, it is kind of difficult for me when I'm doing mag changes. I do like to use the actual slide release uh, on all my guns when I'm doing a mag change. So it is kind of tough to get on a 1911 just in general, and I know it's a lot tougher for, for other people. I have you know kind of long thumbs, but it's still kind of difficult for me. It's very difficult on this, and, and I'll show you guys why. The frame, this is kind of where uh, this design really really differs so this is a lot thicker you can see this kind of like ridge right here it's a lot thicker than it would be on a normal 1911 and that actually protrudes out and it actually inhibits you from being able to hit this this slide release whereas on a traditional 1911 you don't really have that issue um, it's a lot more smooth and, and it does protrude out just enough where you can actually grab a hold of that. But this one, not so much. You see, you got grip down here, you got frame up here. <coughs> Excuse me, so it is very difficult to kind of hit that. Uh, I contacted STI, they actually don't make any extended slide, um, slide releases. And I even um, called SV, or actually I got on the builder uh, SV Gun Builder website and updated my design and requested that they put a uh, extended slide release on the uh, the uh, USPSA Limited gun that I'm having them build for me. And even SV, which is like literally the top of the line custom gun you can get, they don't even offer an extended uh, an extended slide release, which I was really really surprised. So um, I guess I'm going to have to just, when I shoot these, these platforms, I'm gonna have to go back to you know just, just racking the slide um, in order to get that gun back into action. And I've been kind of practicing that because usually what I would do shooting uh, IDPA, kind of come up here and, and drop the mag um, or drop the slide. But um, again, on this platform, having trouble with it. So probably gonna have to come to you know that type of thing here um, to getting it back into action. you know coming up with the magazine and then quickly getting it back in. But that's something else to think about there. Um, so it does have the rail on it. I, I noticed um, I have a Surefire light uh, that, I, that, that I already had in brown on uh, my Vickers Glock 17 here. And um, you know, it slides off no problem on that. But I did notice on, on this rail, it is really, really tight. Um, it's real tight to get on there. I don't know if it's because of the Cerakote finish on this gun or whatever, but that's another cool look if you guys are looking for something that matches. This brown in person, I'm telling you, it matches almost perfect. The, the bezel on this, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's a different type of metal or something like that, 
but uh, it's a little bit of a different brown color. But the body of the Surefire in person matches this gun almost perfectly. So if you guys are looking for a cool setup, uh, home protection or just doing any night shoots, that's a really, really cool setup there. Um, the other thing, you know, it did come with your tool here, your takedown tool, and, and I'll tell you what, you definitely need it on this gun because this freaking bushing is ridiculously tight, absolutely ridiculously tight. So you're definitely gonna have to use that. Other than that, it didn't really come with much of anything. It came with a you know fairly nice STI case here and um, one magazine and um, the instruction booklet, and that's about it. But this is very, very similar to the STI Marauder. So if you guys are wanting a 9mm 2011, um, I can highly recommend, I think, the STI Marauder because it's basically the same gun. It's just the STI Marauder is in all black and it doesn't have this, uh, this hex design. Um, it just has your regular standard cocking serrations and stuff. But um, I think they're basically the same gun and this thing just is great. Uh, right out of the box, it has a, it has a fairly light trigger. Uh, it's right at, um, it's right at three pounds and I'll probably lighten that up just a little bit, but just a teeny little bit of take up, similar to any other 1911, you hit that firm wall and then it just breaks very, very cleanly. And then um, your typical reset. And uh, something to note here too, the STI triggers are plastic and you can get different colors, uh, which is kind of cool too. So that's it. Let you guys get one more look at it here. STI Hextac 9mm, I guess hexagonal, and it's a tactical, uh, I don't know. But it's a very, very nice gun, feels good in the hand, very well balanced. Um, you know, coming from a reputable company like STI and with their heritage, with um, competition shooting and things like that, uh, it's no surprise that this thing just performed absolutely flawlessly. Magwell done fairly well. There's a little bit of a lip here. I would have liked to have seen that blended just a little bit better. Um, but I think STI is kind of more along the production uh, side of things versus a custom firearms company. A lot of guys shooting the edge out there, um, which is another great, great firearm from STI. STI and SV Infinity actually share the patent um, for the 2011. Uh, the only difference, I believe, is I know the gun that I'm having SV build for me right now. They no longer do polymer. Um, it's all steel, so they can they can actually do a, a, a steel grip from a billet. Uh, they'll mill it out, and um, that's kind of nice. Going to add a little bit more weight to the gun. This gun you can shoot um, in IDPA because it does have a bushing, um, and it meets the uh, the size and weight restrictions. The SV that I'm having built will not meet the weight restrictions. Uh, and also, I'm doing their sight tracker. So um, it's a bull barrel. And uh, the, the sight is actually connected to the barrel of the gun. And there's a cutout on the slide. None of that is really allowed <coughs> in IDPA. Plus, I'm doing a full length uh, dust cover. <coughs> but this one, uh, the, the STI Hextac. 9mm and the uh, STI Marauder and a couple of their other ones you can shoot in uh, IDPA um, and USPSA. So that's a good way to go too. But there it is. STI Hextac 9mm. If you guys have any questions go ahead and uh, shoot them towards me in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. And I'll do some more videos as soon as I got some time. Do some videos of, uh, of this one actually in action. But highly, highly recommend it. The Marauders are, are basically out there everywhere. So really, really cool. Never had a uh, 1911 platform in 9mm. And uh, I'm glad that I have it. Because this thing is cool, man.
There it is, Sin City Guns, Freedom Firearms out in Las Vegas. Go check them out, and uh, you guys shoot straight.